Hey everybody, Nick Espinosa, your chief security fanatic here, and today we got to talk about the New York Police Department, or NYPD, because they're now predicting future crimes on social media, kind of. So with that, let's dive right in, and this is actually coming from Katie Hawkinson, who had a really good write-up on this on an insider, but, you know, Everything aside, I think this is beyond just a, a serious privacy issue that we have. And I think the New York uh, Police Department, or NYPD, really, I think, is leading the way in what we should be fighting against here just as as citizens that, that have a right to privacy constitutionally. And around the world, too, the surveillance states continue to rise in democratic states you know, as a thwart for crime, safety, all those kinds of things, where there has to be a balance. Because we can't give up our freedoms, we can't give up our, our privacy just in regard for a little more security. And I think there has to be a balance in that. And so with that backdrop, I want to talk about the NYPD because they've spent millions buying products from a tech company that we're going to dive into here that claims that they can use social media to track and predict crimes and that is according to the Surveillance Technology Oversight Project, or STOP. They are doing, for the record, the Cyber Lord's work. Now, they're a nonprofit dedicated to basically fighting mass surveillance and protecting privacy. And they released a uh, redacted version of the NYPD contracts with Voyager Labs. That's the company that we're talking about. And it shows the NYPD signed a contract for more than $8 million with that company in 2018. And so this is what we're talking about. Voyage Labs, it, Voyager, excuse me, Labs, is a tech company that says it produces, quote, AI-based investigation solutions, end quote. It sells products across a multitude of industries, including law enforcement, the U.S. public sector, and corporate security, according to their website. But what's not new is law enforcement's use of social media analytics. But what is new is that their products are capable of more than just simple surveillance. Now, the company claims that basically its products can predict future crime, according to an investigation from the Brennan Law, uh, law Center for Justice, a, a basically law and public policy institute as well. I've read some of their work before. They're usually very on it from what I remember. Now, in a Voyager Lab sales pitch to the LA Police Department that was obtained by the Brennan uh, Center, and I quote, Voyager Discoverer takes Voyager analytics capabilities a step further, analyzing not only who is most influential, but also who is most invested in a given stance, emotionally, ideologically, and personally, end quote. Now, to continue with that as well, they went on in that sales pitch, and I quote again, this ability moves the discussion from those who are most engaged online to those most engaged in their hearts, end quote. And we'll talk about that in a second. So Voyager Labs also claims that their artificial intelligence can assign risk scores to social media users regarding their, quote, ties to or affinity for Islamic fundamentalism or extremism, according to the report from Brennan. Another one of their products, Voyager Check, quote, provides an automated indication of individuals who may pose a risk, end quote, and that's according to their website. Now, Will Owen, who is the communications director for Stop, called basically the use of these products both invasive and alarming in his press release. An NYPD spokesperson talking to Insider said that the department uses software to monitor suspects for a variety of crime, like gun violence, terrorism, and human trafficking, but clarified it does not currently use the predictive tools that Voyager Lab offers. We're going to have to take the NYPD at their word for that, because obviously this is a hot button topic. And so here we are in the same way that the FBI had a copy of the uh, NSO group's Pegasus, uh, Pegasus uh, infection and said, well, we're not using it. We're just studying it. And we found out later that they were. Now, Will Colston, vice president for global marketing at Voyager Labs, talking to Insider, basically said that the company only uh, uses only publicly available data and that their software, quote, is not intended to be a substitute for rigorous human oversight and analysis. We categorically reject any notion that our software is designed to infringe upon civil liberties or freedom of speech or that it is biased in any way, end quote. Now, Meta, the parent company of Facebook and Instagram, sued Voyager this past uh, Voyager Labs this past January, claiming that the tech company actually created thousands of fake accounts to scrape data for more than 600,000 users. That's according to The Guardian. Voyager Labs has since filed to dismiss that lawsuit, and we're awaiting a court decision on that one, according to Colston, the spokesperson for Voyager Labs. Now, I find this actually pretty interesting because, as I, and I'll say what he said again, we categorically reject any notion that our software is designed to infringe upon civil liberties or freedom of speech or that it is biased in any way. Well, think about it in this way in terms of the infringement of speech. 
if for whatever reason you know you're being monitored and those that are monitoring you are you basically utilizing an understanding of who you are and giving it to law enforcement, you're going to change your behavior by default. This is a very standard anthropological and sociological standard. You don't basically embed yourself with a native population as an outsider because it fundamentally changes how they interact with each other and with you because studies have shown that you're an outsider, they're going to change your behavior. So you study it from afar, you don't get involved. We do the same thing for the most part when we are tracking, you know, animals in the wild and humans are animals in some way, shape or form, but we obviously tend to be a lot smarter. And so if I'm, let's say, somebody that is angry, somebody that is extremist, et cetera, et cetera, that basically says, well, screw this, I'm going to burn it down, I'm going to assassinate, you know, whatever, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If that's being monitored by law enforcement, the artificial intelligence uh, essentially really it has a hard time understanding intent, understanding that heart that, that they were talking about. And so therefore, am I joking? Am I angry? What What is that? On top of it, we are stratifying in our social media right now. If you look at basically students in college right now, there are different social media platforms that are geared specific to them that are blowing up right now. And so they're not really on Facebook. And typically when we are talking about violent crime, uh, especially if that's something that they are trying to predict, you're not going to get a lot of those people on traditional social media right now because traditional social media is not where most go. As big as Facebook is, there are a ton of out there that that are now coming into fruition at the college level and therefore longitudinally will follow those college students into the workforce etc cetera, etc cetera. and so this now has to be this type of technology then has to be integrated into multiple social media platforms in order to be effective not to mention the fact you've got the four chans and eight coons and all that different kind of garbage out there what are they doing with that so I think this is a huge issue, and and I, I don't think that, that this is something that we want. If we have artificial intelligence giving a risk probability score, maybe I have a really crass sense of humor, and now I'm at higher risk for violence, according to the artificial intelligence, when I'm a peaceful person. The point is there's going to be a lot of false positives. The point is, is that this is invasive, and as much as the Facebooks of the world are invasive in terms of data mining and all of that, they typically honor police warrants. And so... If my Facebook is locked to private and they are just, let's say I live in New York City within the jurisdiction of the NYPD, are they now allowed through this technology to scan it even though I'm private? I've locked my Facebook account down so that only my friends can see it. Or if it's a friend of a friend, these are things we have to talk about. We had a massive scandal with Facebook thanks to the Cambridge Analytica scandal where friends of friends were getting caught up into something that they simply never signed up for or never used because that's how invasive it was. And so there's a lot of questions with this. I think this is a problem. I, I'm a huge, huge proponent of, of getting rid of these kinds of things. I think we are, we are overcorrecting in society when it comes to uh, intelligence, especially when it comes to artificial intelligence as it relates to policing a population. I think we're also overcorrecting on surveillance as well. Overwhelmingly, we are living in one of the safest times in the entire history of the planet. And, and by virtue of that, our technology is is it should not be moving in the opposite direction. We should not be making laws or decisions based on the lowest common denominator. And while those things need to be policed, nobody wants violent crime, nobody wants gun crime or robberies or assaults or, or anything like that. We have to balance balance the good with the bad and overwhelmingly the vast majority of us are not criminals so I think this is important uh, to understand but if we are talking about predicting future crime that is a very serious issue just ask Tom Cruise and please like share follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP where hopefully we'll never see Voyager Labs same with YouTube as well and as always stay safe stay online and please attempt to stay private thanks everybody